The number of novel coronavirus cases continues to rise in the North State and in the rest of the country. To date, more than 1,000 COVID-19 cases have been reported in the Butte County area. Nationally, that number is approaching 5 million, but we can help slow the spread and work together to protect our community from this condition that has killed more than 140,000 people. Hello everyone, I'm Susie Larry Hall and I'm Inlow's Community Outreach Coordinator. I'm here today with Susie Benson, Inlow's Manager of Infection Prevention and Regulatory Compliance to talk about this topic. But before we get started, please remember that the information we're about to share is not intended to be medical advice. If you have specific questions about your health or the health of a loved one, please talk to your provider. And as always, please feel free to post your comments and questions in the comments field and we'll do our best to answer them as many as possible during the broadcast. And with that, we'll get started. Thank you, Susie, so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Um, so let's just start with the basics. So how can we slow the spread of COVID-19 and what is our role in that? So first, let me give a little synopsis, because I know that most people know where COVID comes from and how it's spread, but I want to just to make sure everyone understands. COVID is spread from person to person. That means that the droplets that I have in my nose and my mouth, I expel if I have COVID. And then you, if I'm talking to you when we weren't wearing masks, Susie, you would be inhaling those droplets and they would go down into your lungs and then I would have exposed you and possibly infected you with COVID. So that's how it's spread. The things that we can do to stop that spread is one, we can social distance. You can see that we're sitting six foot apart. So that, no, um, when those droplets get expelled from me and Susie inhales them, when you inhale them, what happens is that um, it's usually within six foot. So we stay six foot apart. Um, the other thing is, is we mask. If I have droplets that I'm coughing and sneezing out into the environment, I'm wearing a mask, it, that mask is catching my droplets. So I can't cough them out and you now can't inhale it. So I've prevented that. The other thing is, Stay away from people who are sick, because if they have the coronavirus and they're infected, the chances are that you can be infected and exposed because they have a lot more, they have a lot of virus that they're expelling in the air. Monitor your own symptoms. That's really important, because if we're sick, a fever, a cough, we can then be spreading it to other people. So make sure that we're monitoring our symptoms and staying home if we are sick and not going out in public or going to work when we're sick. That's great. So let's talk a little bit about masks. Um, you'll see I brought a stack of masks here to talk through because I know that these are some really popular ones that are we see around. Um, so let's go ahead and just talk about those. So I have a, a pile here. And the first thing I want to talk about is some that we see a lot in healthcare. So in healthcare, so I'm wearing this because you have the flu and I know that as a healthcare worker, if I wear this, it can protect me. We had to think a little different now with COVID because there are people in the community and where we work that can have COVID who are asymptomatic. That means they have no symptoms. Mm -hmm. They can still spread it when they cough, they sneeze, they sing, talk loudly. They're spreading those particles that I can inhale and then get sick. So now we had to think differently. How do we prevent the spread from those asymptomatic people? One of the ways we do it is we wear cloth masks. So um, you have some here. So here's yeah. a cloth mask. And what I do is in the community, I'm asymptomatic, but I have COVID. So what I do is I put this mask on and just like what I was talking about earlier about catching my droplets on a mask, I put this on, it catches my droplets. And so now I can't pass COVID to you. The same works for you. Uh, you cover your face with cloth. I cover my face with cloth. We're both catching our secretions and our droplets and neither one of us can get sick from COVID. We have to think that way now because we don't know who has COVID. We go out in the community. If we're in six foot distance, we can be exposed to COVID without um, w and not knowing that someone is sick. So healthcare, we still wear the PPE, which is what we call personal protective equipment okay, and the, to protect not, us. Okay. And we wear N95s for people with like TB and stuff like that. But in community, we're wearing masks um, to protect me. I'm, when I wear a mask, I'm protecting you. You're wearing a mask, you're protecting me in the community. And that's what we're trying to do to make sure that we're not passing that COVID from people who don't know they have it. But then I have a question about the valve. So I've seen valved ones. Here's two 
very starkly different, but they have a similar design piece. Would these also be appropriate for that same idea of like community, I'm trying to protect you, you're trying to protect me? No, they wouldn't. The reason why is because those masks are made kind of like on the same concept of healthcare use. I'm wearing these masks, I'm wearing this valve mask to try to prevent what's out there from getting to me and making me sick. But the concept of me trying to protect you from my COVID is not going to work because my breath can be expel expelled out of this port or this valve. Gotcha. So I would not be protecting you from COVID if I wore this and um, you weren't wearing a mask. Okay. So healthcare workers, though, who or, or people, farmers, they wear these a lot of times in industrial mm -hmm. to prevent pesticides and stuff from coming in. Nice. And then just to... Follow up, that's the same with this guy. The same with the kid one, um, okay. because it expel, ex, uh, expels the, the breath there in the sides. All right, good to know, thank you so much. So my next question for you then is, um, how do we take care of our masks? Like how do we know when, <clears throat> when we're supposed to take them off? Should we be wearing them more than once? Like how do we make, take care of our, our masks so that they well, still are working? Well, you can wear your masks more than once, and you see people do it all the time. So what you need to do is if they're cloth masks okay. and you're wearing them, you're going to want to wash them when they become soiled or dirty. Um, and if they're the, these little masks like this, mm -hmm. if people wear these, the, it, you want to throw them away and, and get a new one when it becomes wet or soiled. The thing about storing them, though, say people, um, they're storing them in their cars a lot. So the best thing to store them is is like a brown uh, paper bag, lunch bag, put, a put them in there, put a paper clip, and it keeps them, paper breathes really well. Plastic, not as much. It can bring, uh, build up fluid and condensation. Okay. So you want to store them in a pl uh, paper bag with a paper clip on them. So, my just, next, so um, for the cloth ones, though, do you want to hang dry them, or do we want to dry them in the dryer? Does it really matter as long as they're most, dry before you wear them again? Most time, people say they come out better according to the cloth, because everyone, what they make in homemade is different. Okay. So what a lot of people say they're seeing is that it's better to um, wash it in the uh, washing machine, dry it, and then just iron it. Oh, that's a good idea. What about, um, and then, so let's say at home, like right now, and I guess I'm gonna expose everyone I do at home, but I, I hang mine on my coat rack. Like I have a coat rack and I, I hang it up there. Is that an appropriate way to store it? Or should I, again, always keep it in a paper bag so that it's kind of staying clean in its own little space? Well, I mean, if you're at home and you hang it up, it's fine, but you gotta remember that you're gonna be taking it in and out all the time. So it's probably easier and better for get, not get contaminated to put it in a bag. Okay. The other thing is, is you have to remember some of the masks that are made, mm -hmm. the cloth mask, you have to be careful because sometimes if they're too small, you're doing one thing that's really not good to prevent you touching your face because you want to make sure you're not touching your face. And one of the things is if the mask is too small, what are you going to constantly do? Adjust it. You're constantly moving it up and you want to keep your hands away from your eyes, nose, and mouth. And if I'm constantly, and I'm just doing a bad thing, if I'm constantly going like this, then I'm actually going to be touching my eyes, nose, and mouth. So okay. make sure that it's the right size. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you this next, the proper wearing of a mask or a face covering. Um, do you mind going over that as well with the mask you're wearing, demonstrating to us like what's appropriate? You want to keep it um, on your, cover in your mouth and your nose and don't, a lot of people, you ever see any pandemic in the store, they're wearing it like this, it's not covering their nose. So you want to pinch, you want to get a mask if it's, um, if it's one of like these that, mm -hmm. You can pinch and close and off to the nose. Like this cloth one I have. Some of the cloth ones do mm -hmm. that too. So you want to make sure it's covered. The eye, uh, the nose and mouth is fully covered. So pull and it down under the chin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like you said, if it's too small, so in making sure it's not too short here. Right. Mm -hmm. Just so that it's collecting, once again, my uh, cough sneezes that are coming out of my mouth, it's collecting them. Thank you. That was really great. I appreciate that. Um, so another thing is, is there are some people who... I've, I've heard friends, family too, who've talked about like wearing a mask impedes their breathing. Um, is there, do you wanna to touch on that at all or? You know, I do, I look that up a lot because I have heard that and I have friends myself who asked the same question. I could not find research that says, there is research that says, look at this condition and this person who wore it 10 hours and now they're having these health problems. I couldn't find that. So, um, but there is uh, contraindications or some people who shouldn't wear a mask and those are people, uh, children under two, mm -hmm. um, people who have severe respiratory issues. They, it impedes their breathing, those people. 
and people um, who have claustrophobic issues. So those people might not be able to wear a mask, but for a normal, healthy person, um, it, I don't, we don't see it because remember in healthcare, we wear masks all the time for hours on end and we're not seeing health conditions related to that. Surgery who um, personnel do surgery for eight, 10 hours straight and do not take off their masks and they're not uh, developing health conditions. So I think that for certain people that have respiratory, severe respiratory issues, it's probably a legitimate concern, but other people, we don't see that. So. Okay. And maybe again, recommending that they can explore some of these other mask options, and in maybe the they might be yes. they yes. might feel less. Yes, good imposed. idea to wear the cloth instead. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Thank you. So, when when should we be wearing our masks? Any time that you are coming in contact with any person who does not live in your home, you need to be wearing a mask. We call it our bubble. I live with my husband. He and I, uh, we're uh, very careful when we go in public, and so we do not wear our masks together. But anyone else who comes into our sphere and I come in contact with them, then I wear a mask for. Even if family members, because family members tend to give us a false sense of security, and I'm talking about the ones that don't live in our home. So they give us this false sense of security because we think I'm being careful, my mother-in-law is being careful, but my mother-in-law is also visiting with the cousin who they're being careful, but now I've also introduced increased risk to me and my husband because we're coming in contact with someone who maybe we think are being careful, but they're not. So anytime you're going in contact with anyone who's not living with you, you should wear a mask. And then actually, can you talk a little bit about masking here at Enlo too? What can people expect, expect with masks in? when they're coming onto the premise, like coming so, to like an appointment or visiting? Yep. So Enlo's policy is 100% masking for all. So that means that as an employee, I wear my mask um, as soon as I get to um, walk into any building, I'm wearing a mask. If you're a visitor and you uh, come to Enlo, you will be asked to wear a mask. If you're a patient, you are asked to wear a mask. Now with patients, the difference is, is once a patient gets to their private room, um, we can we tell them that they can take their mask off when they're alone, but we will ask you when we come to the room if we're going to give you care. We'll ask you to put your mask on while we're in that room giving you care. But we are 100% masking. When you say that when somebody's in their room, are you talking about when someone's been like inpatient, they're admitted yes. and they're in the room, yes. not just if they're just coming into a clinic and getting a checkup. If they're in a clinic and getting a checkup, they will always be asked to wear their mask. But if they're admitted as an inpatient and they're in a room, it's kind of like their bedroom, we let them take their mask off while they're alone, because they have to eat, whatever. But we do ask them to put it on. If I'm coming in to check your blood pressure, give your meds, we'll ask you. Because remember, we're also protecting our, each other. So Right, great, that's really helpful. Thank you so much. Um, so now I wanna talk about going outside. Mm -hmm. So you talked about when someone comes into my space, um, that I should be wearing a mask if they're not living with me. So obviously my spouse and my kids, we don't wear a mask when it's just the four of us. But let's talk about going outside. What does that look like? Well, going outside is of course better because the droplets that I'm expelling are now going to um, dissipate in the air a lot faster. And so it's going to be better. The issue with going outside and what we're seeing is transmission of outside is because people get in groups outside and they're um, within six feet of multiple people. And so just because you're outside, when you're in those groups, you're still at risk of catching COVID. So you need to make sure that if you're in a group, and we were talking about this today, you're hiking because everybody wants to be out hiking now. So you're hiking, but you're hiking on a trail with lots of people and you're coming in contact with lots of people. Just wear your mask when you're actually gonna come in contact with someone else. That's my great follow-up question. I was going to say when people are riding their bikes or running or if you're by yourself. By yourself, it's okay to not wear your mask. But if, I'm, if I know I'm going to be running into like a very populated space that's often like the park seems right. to be really busy these days, which is great. I'm glad everyone's being out and being active. But again, masking myself when I know I'm going to be in tighter quarters. Right, in the okay. groups, group settings. Because the one thing that um, the transmission we're seeing um, in – a lot of the hot spots are caused by the gatherings and the groups. And so they might be having a gathering outside, a family reunion of 25 people. But the issue is that if I have a small space and I have 25 people outside in a small space, we've seen a lot of transmission and a lot of positivity in families who do that because they feel like outside is better. Well, it is better, 
but it's not 100% protective. So, um, so if we're outside and we're six feet apart, we can not wear masks? Or are you saying if we're outside, we're six feet apart, we should continue to wear a mask? If you're outside, because if you're in a park and you're way over here you know, on a table with your husband and someone else is 10 feet over there and you, they're, they're not going to be wearing masks. So that is better because the risk is going to be very minimal that you're going to get because those droplets are not going to be able to be expelled hard enough for it to reach me where I'm over here 10 feet away without okay. a mask. Okay, got it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I know it seems, um, it's, it's so confusing. I just like there's so much information. So I really appreciate you kind of walking us through it. Um, so what else should we keep in mind then as we are out in public to help slow the spread? Like any other recommendations? Um, just remembering, when I say about masking and six foot, those are very important things. But one thing to remember is that the one way we, pro um, we protect ourselves is to try to stay away from as many people as we can. So don't go out all the time, just like you used to before COVID. Try to stay home as much as possible, but when you have to go out to the store or whatever, wear your mask and six foot distance and use your hand sanitizing. Make sure you're washing your hands when you're touching other things that people have touched and keep your hands away from your eyes, nose and mouth. Got it. Um, another follow-up question, um, we talked about gatherings. Is that the same, do you have any information about kids? Um, and oh. kids and play dates, and I mean, I know there's been a lot of concern about this idea of like kids gathering and what is that? Can you um, put on that? Well, that a lot of that comes from kid. The the, um, the knowledge about kids is that oh, COVID doesn't affect kids as much. It doesn't, as far as the fact that them getting as sick as an adult would. But they still get COVID and they still can spread COVID. It's not any different than anyone else. The difference is is I have a kid. And I'm very careful about where I go. I wear my mask, I stay six feet apart. I have a two-year-old and I'm very particular about my child. My neighbor has a two-year-old, but she also has a 92-year-old mother that lives with her who is at risk so for complications if she were to get COVID for impossible death. So my two-year-old and the other two-year-old play together. They're very light, neither one of them are symptomatic, but one of them could carry it. The, the risk becomes I let them play together and now one takes it back to the 92-year-old grandmother who could possibly have a complication and die. So that's the risk. It's not that they're going to get so sick. Their risk is really low for that. But their risk of spreading is just as great as an adult or an older adult, anyone. So what should people do if they think they have COVID-19? If a person feels like they have COVID-19, most people are going to have really light symptoms. So they're going to have a fever. Um, I clarify that. Not most, but a, a large portion of people will just have light symptoms. Um, fever, cough, headache. So if you think you have COVID and you know it's light, you're going to need to stay home. You're not going to go to work. You're not going to go out in public. Um, you can, if you feel like you, it is definitely tested, and definitely if you've been exposed to someone else who's positive, you could get tested. And one of the ways you could get tested is go to um, the community public health website, and they have a, a place where you can look at their local testing sites, and you could get tested, and that would help you know so that you can possibly see about if you've um, exposed anyone in your home or stuff like that. But if you feel you have a medical emergency, in other words, trouble breathing, um, short of breath, um, your fingers become blue, the lips become blue, then you're going to want to, um, chest pain, you're going to want to seek out medical care in your local emergency department. Now, if it doesn't feel like a medical emergency, there's also local um, resources that you can go to. There are local prompt cares. Um, there's a lot of the prov your providers are doing telehealth, and you could call your provider and possibly do a telehealth visit. Um, but rem reminding everyone that a medical emergency may not be COVID related also because some of the things we saw early on is everyone was afraid to go for, help, um, go for care because they were afraid that that's where all the COVID people are at the hospital. So remember, if you have a medical emergency, non-COVID also, please seek care because just like we talked about earlier, at Inlo, we're doing all the social distancing and the masking and the monitoring our symptoms to make sure that you are safe when you come to Inlo to get care, even for COVID or not, or not COVID. That's great. So this has all been really great insight. I appreciate you answering all of my questions and questions that we're getting from the community. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we get 
sign off for today? Um, wear your mask, social distance, and stay home if you can, and don't congregate in groups. That's a big one. And thank you. Thank you, Susie, for being here, and thank you all for watching. Please join me for our next Facebook discussion. In the meantime, be sure to wear your masks, wash your hands, and practice social distancing. Together, we can slow the spread and help save lives. Take care.